Good morning, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Today, obviously, is the uh, Thursday. It's the 24th day of November 2022. And if I am crazy, if I'm, if I'm not crazy, today is Thanksgiving. Hi. Uh, I'm here to give you th- to, to give thanks, to say thank you to all you guys who help support what I do, uh, who've been... Uh, uh, following my work for a very long time now and uh, I, I, I can't say thank you enough um, means a lot to me means everything to me in more ways than one so uh, we got to give thanks I don't know because of my education um, back in the early days back in the stone ages um, whether or not I was supposed to give thanks for countries Sending their derelicts and, uh, uh, and and shifty fucking citizens over um, to be settlers in the new world, or if I'm supposed to give thanks that the um, bloody savages, the godless savages, uh, didn't uh, eat all of our founding fathers. Those, by the way, were our founding fathers. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to give thanks for. Maybe I'm supposed to give thanks for both. I I, I don't know. Uh, but here we are in the land of the free and the home of the brave, the land of the big PX, the shining city on the hill. I'm giving thanks. I'm supposed to give thanks for family. Uh, I cannot do that anymore. I can for the family that has gone, for the family that has passed. And uh, I do. Um, And I remember this time of year, uh, the faith uh, my mother had in me that uh, perhaps misguided, but uh, it was never wavering. And so I give thanks for that. Uh, The things we give thanks for, I give thanks for my animals. I give thanks for all of them, and again, I give thanks to specifically T in this case, because I have one of these. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Hmm. Bo's going Bo's gonna to try to intercept it. The nanner, the catnip infused nanner. It takes a second, it takes a second. Let it take hold, let it take hold. Uh oh, there's cricket. Okay, that was slightly anticlimactic. It's like, get away from me. It's mine. <laughs> kitten is the junkie. This, uh, someone, <laughs> but once it, kitten, uh, kitten is, uh, all my other cats. Someone sent me three of those, so I gave one to each cat. And, uh, I had to I had to separate kitten from them, uh, both from them because he was trying to eat them, and tear them to shreds, which I'm sure he will do eventually. And uh, I came back about an hour later, and all the other cats had kind of gotten over it and were laying around, uh, recovering. The kitten was curled up under the uh, under the kitchen table, and he had his you know tucked into his fucking little chest like a junkie. Kitten's getting affectionate all of a sudden. This could turn into one of those videos. Anyway, there you go. Can I take this from you? Can I have it? No. So we'll see what happens with that. And the animals will start fucking freaking out behind us. Hi. Anyway, thank you, T. They are appreciating those. Uh, also, the, the bones for Bo came in. I got those as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, 
uh, thanks to all of you guys out there for supporting my, what I do. Uh, it's, it means a lot to me, especially uh, T, especially on BB and everybody on the on the sub uh, on the uh, Patreon thing, um, and of course Kathy and all these people. Thank you very much, all of you. Um, today's video is kind of a stream of consciousness video. Uh, I saw this thing on uh, I, I, uh, on Prime. I have videos that pop up, and up pops this video from. Uh, <laughs> he's turned into a fucking. Uh, he's he's a junkie whore. I've turned into uh, I've, turned, I've turned into a junkie whore. Uh, I watched this thing up pop Tucker Carlson video, and he's uh, he's pissed off because um, this shooter guy. From the Club Q shooting in L.A., uh, who was supposedly beaten by the fucking ex-Marine guy who acted out that whole scene for us. Uh, apparently, he says in court, his lawyer says he must be referred to as they and them because he's not uh, binary. He's non-binary, um, which, of course, he took as face value and ran with and said, oh my God, all these people now, they can't figure out whether he's binary. He's, he's, they can't accept the fact that he's, and, and Tucker was calling him transgender or gay or some shit, which of course is stupid. Um, obviously, it's a, a ploy by his fucking, <coughs> by his lawyer. But the whole thing has just gotten so goddamn uh, ridiculous. It's so wag the dog. It is such a fucking, it's a, it's a production. And nothing could make it clearer than this guy's fucking porn star, meth addict father. <coughs> um... Who, of course, they rolled out a day or so ago uh, with an interview from CBS 8. Uh, they dug this motherfucker up. Uh, they found out that he was not only on divorce court, he's TV guy, but he was also on intervention. Two reality shows that both uh, had instances of staging fucking shit. Uh, he was an MMA fighter turned porn star slash actor. Uh, he lists on his IMDb page. He has an IMDb page. Uh, he was in fucking divorce court and intervention. Who the fuck would list being on intervention on their fucking resume? I mean, are you... Sp All right, you've had enough of the banana. The nanner's, the nanner's now gone. Um, he's going to start freaking out. He's going to start jonesing in a minute. I mean, it's the whole thing is just a fucking, it's a joke. It's, it's like the whole thing is a production. It's like the whole goddamn thing is a fucking production. <laughs> including the hero, including the fucking, uh, it, the whole thing seems like a fucking production. I saw pictures of him in court, the shooter, quote unquote, Aldrich, and he's all leaning over in a fucking le wheelchair or some shit, um, and he's got like one mark on his face. Then they show a picture of him up close, and it's like he's got, I mean, his face is just all black and blue, and his, ne his neck is black, but you go back and look at the picture, the actual picture from the fucking photo in the, in the, in the, in the courtroom, none of that exists. <clears throat> Did they add that shit, you know, because of the hero's fucking state? I, I, I don't fucking know. It, this is just... I don't know what's worse. Three options. One... Some dude who has a fucked up childhood with a fucked up father and fucked up mother. I'll show you all of this. The story where he got supposedly arrested for 
making bomb threats. Here's the deal with that. He goes at the age of 20 or 21, whatever it is, he, he shows up at the house with his suitcase because he wants to live with his mom, Laura, I think is her name. Don't quote me. But then because he thinks he's got no place to live and he's homeless, but turns out she's fucking renting a room from the person who actually owns the fucking house. And there's no way he can stay there. So he starts flipping out and saying, today's the day I'm going to die, blah, 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 blah. And so that's when that whole fucking scene unfolds. That's his mother. And she's the stable one in the fucking family. The father is, of course, a guy who was on intervention because he was supposedly hooked on crystal meth, and he's doing his crystal meth fucking act. He's doing a fucking act, by the way, in this video. I'm going to show you the video. He's, it's, he, he's, he's acting. He's doing a fucking act. <laughs> but this, these are his parents. These are who he, he comes from. He's completely insta- unstable. And so, of course, it's a perfect fucking choice for either the patsy or whatever, but what's what's the worst case scenario? This completely unstable individual with a, no fucking shot in fucking life to start with goes off and kills some people and immediately not only does the press jump on it while people are still being autopsied to use it for their own political fucking uh, agenda, but also so does the politicians, several of them. Uh, to use this as a, we got to jump on, we got to strike while the iron's hot. That's their, that's their, they've learned that from these events in the past. We can't wait a decent amount of time <laughs> to be respectful to the people who've lost their lives because if we wait a week, people have forgotten about it and their anger and their revulsion and the shock and awe effect is has has waned and they've moved on to the next thing so they've got to jump on it right now that's option number one this guy really did this because he was fucked up because he had no chance in life because of his parents and he went off and killed people who's suffering right now and they're using it as political fucking fodder option number two is that some offshoot of some offshoot of some fucking Uh, alphabet agency is running American Gladio campaign here in the United States. And that this individual was picked and he was turned into a patsy. They're not going to release the fucking video from the inside to see if the hero, Ramirez, whatever his name is, actually did tackle this guy in the in the way that they said or whether or not it was off camera someplace and all of a sudden oh we got this guy wearing the fucking uh fatigues and wearing the fucking body armor and the mask and he goes in shoot shoot shoots and then he's off camera someplace and then all of a sudden Amira says aha i got it so is that more cynical or is the first one more cynical where they're taking advantage of and using this real thing that happened, which is a tragedy across the fucking board from this kid's birth. Or option three, whereas this whole goddamn thing was fucking, it's a production. It's a pageant. It's a pageant. I I don't know what's more cynical. I don't know what's more. You know, YouTube and Twitter would certainly prefer option number one because that's the truth. That's the official fucking truth. Um, Which I think in some ways uh, is more callous and certainly more hypocritical than any of the others. At least hypocritical on, on on that front. Because supposedly, you know, it's people on the right. I'm not on the right. People on the right saying it's wrong to take fucking toddlers into a goddamn, uh, into a drag show and try to 
normalize this kind of it's wrong for teachers some it's not all teachers doing this but some are allowed to do this or they're called out for it and maybe they are fired maybe they aren't but talking about things like giving oral sex to, 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 talking to kids about oral sex at the age of fucking nine i mean this is just of course and of course sex change operations too uh fucking kids um and the normalization of that <laughs> is wrong and in ways it is grooming um what's what's worse the pageant the whole thing didn't happen it's just been staged in order to bring about this particular change in this case the change would be not only banning assault weapons which they aren't assault weapons by the way banning assault weapons and further censoring the internet so that there's no more of these you know people uh, with with these extreme ideas being encouraged to go out and do things like this uh, a, a pageant for, for that end or using real fucking suffering and real fucking victims to achieve the same fucking goal I, I don't know. To, to be honest with you, I don't know what's worse. But I'll tell you one thing. The, the, the more you think about it, the worse it fucking gets. So I, I kind of, kind of, uh, I'm kind of jealous of the people who just look at it and, and believe it right off the bat and go on about their business. And I think that's part of the problem. You know, when they say that we got to jump on this thing right now, uh, we got to hit this thing while it's while, while it's hot. Otherwise, people will move on. People move on because they, they, this stuff, the more they think about it, the more they fucking internalize it, the worse it makes them feel. I've been I've been called a downer before because I do that. So um, I guess I am. Maybe I should do this. Hang on a second. It just smells like oregano. I don't know what the fuck. But whatever it is, cats like it. Anyway. Um, there's nothing about any of this that smells authentic to me. And starting with, I did a video of this the other day, starting with this individual. Oh, if I mean telling it right. I just know I got into mode and I needed to save my family. And that family was, at that time, everybody in that room. Um, and that's what I, I, I was trained to do. I saw him and I went and got him. And when I pulled him down, I, 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 I told him I was hitting him. I, I want to kill you, guy. I, 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 I'm going to kill you, guy. Uh, I, I, I don't believe Top Knot. I don't know what the fuck I did. Why I don't believe Top Knot. But I don't believe Top Knot. Sorry. I just don't. Uh, he goes on later and he's waving his arms around. He's giving his fucking interpretation of what happened. He's talking about the fact that he was the one dictating to everybody else what they did. You, you move the gun. You, you call 911. You, <laughs> you give me a fucking cheeseburger. <clears throat> I, I don't believe Top Knot. Uh, not in, in any way, shape, or form. Is that the other guy who supposedly helped? who was supposedly a guy wearing high heels was kicking him in the head. I mean, I told you then this this whole thing was just uh, ridiculous. And then to get more into it, to show you how uh, it is still even more ridiculous, I present to you uh, the father of the quote-unquote shooter. This is from CBS 8. There was a shooting involving, you know, there were multiple people. Right. And then I thought, they were on going to find it's a, a gay bar. Yeah, right. And, and, and I was like, oh my God, is he gay? As a scare, I was like, oh my God, shit, is he gay? Hmm. And he's not gay. So it's like, it's, 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 Well, you guys had you hear that? conversations about that. You, you were, oh, yeah, so like, you, 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 I was you adamant. Him, yeah, you were adamant that gay is bad. I was adamant. Gay 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 there was a shooting involving, you know, there were multiple people. <coughs> Why is the volume so fucking low on that? Right. And then I thought, they were on going to find it's a, a gay bar. Yeah, right. And, uh, and I was like, oh my God, is he gay? I was scared. Oh my God, shit, is he gay? And he's not gay. So it's, 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 well, you guys had had 
conversations about that. You, you were. Oh yeah, like, you, you, I was you adamant. Him, yeah, you were adamant that gay is gay is bad. I'm, yeah. I'm a Mormon. I'm a conservative Republican, and we don't do gay. We don't do yeah. gay. We don't do gay. Yeah. I can't get answers from the attorneys really, but they're saying that some of these you know, it's involving a gay bar or some shit. <coughs> so, um, so uh, for some reason, the video, the audio is fucked on that. Look at this dude. Look at this. Supposedly, I mean, this is the guy who has a meth history. And here's a full video, the whole thing. Um, what is this? Did they remove it? That's a different video. Okay, you know what? Uh, I don't know what's happening here. Something's fucking with my goddamn computer. Um, this is interesting. So, so this this guy's fucking whole demeanor, this guy's whole act, is in in my opinion, uh, a put on. I mean, what the fuck is happening with my goddamn audio? I thought he was suicide. He said his mother told me that he. Um, I'll give you a history. I was a. Um, a, a, a porn star, okay? I became a porno star in 2002, and I, I, I combined it with a mixed martial arts career, and my, my ex was, she, she took off my son. I hadn't seen him for years. Um, little did I didn't see my son, you know, I tried to give him, you know, the father figure, whatever, I didn't know where his little whereabouts were. Um, I found out recently that he did not kill himself in 2016, that he, um, that he's, um, you know, he lied him well, you know, and uh, he lives in Colorado. Yeah, why did you think he had... Okay. Uh, according to some reports, he was told that by his ex-wife that the son killed himself in 2016 because he was so ashamed of him, his father. Father's name is Aaron Bink. And in 2009, he was on intervention. Uh, in 2011, he was on uh, divorce court. But apparently, I thought he got divorced before fucking 2011. Um, so it's, it's, it's very odd. Whatever the fucking case may be, it's very odd. Uh, he was a bare knuckles fighter. Uh, is it possible that this dude was high... Um, on meth when he gave that interview. Yes, it is. But it's also possible that that's a performance because that is such a cliched... Um, I mean, if, if, if a guy on a film or, or stage or whatever was playing a meth addict doing that, he'd be like, come on, guy, it's cringe. <laughs> it's such a fucking... Uh, over the top cliche, uh, you, you wouldn't buy it. And so watching him and the fact that he's involved in this now and he's doing this, uh, is either he's just totally fucking whack job crystal meth, uh, or that's a performance. Um, and I, to be honest, I can't say one way or the other. It's, it's one of the two. <laughs> Could be either or. Um, so that's his thing. But here, this is, now again, just just for shits and giggles. In this section, he's talking about, I don't know what the fucking audio is going to do. Hey, good American, I'll be the president someday. Conservative, extraordinaire. And I've been very vocal about that. It was a, I support Randy Lapel, or his grandpa. I love Randy Lapel. Hey, good American, I'll be the president someday. You see, I mean, it's a, it's a it's it seems like a performance, and he's talking about Randy Vapel, and I love Randy Vapel, and he's going to be uh, uh, president someday. It's, he's a politician, um, and he says he's conservative. It's like everything he's saying are exactly what they want to fucking demonize. Uh, he mentioned his Mormon roots. He mentioned his fact that he's he's. Uh, uh, conservative. He didn't care about his son really shooting a, a bunch of people at a gay bar as long as he's not gay. 
And then he mentions, he tosses in Randy Vopel. Who was Randy Vopel? Randy Vopel is the father of his ex-wife. Randy Vopel is the father of his ex-wife. When I was reading that in here, I was like, wait a minute, what? <coughs> Hang on a second. Uh, I, I, was, I was just, uh, where is this? So you can't watch, you can't do this on Los Angeles time. So I pulled it up on fucking uh, Wayback Machine. Aldrich, the shooter, is the grandchild of California Assemblyman Randy Vopel. Randy Vopel is the father of the woman who he divorced. And his website, uh, Divorce Court, uh, his first wife, his first wife was Laura. Vanessa was his first wife. Laura Vopel was the second wife. And Laura Vopel was the one, here you go. Uh, court records show all the just parents have criminal records. Laura Vopel was found guilty of reduced charge of criminal mischief in San Antonio and sentenced to five years on probation. Uh, in the following years, Aldrich moved around with their mother to Texas and then to Colorado, at times living with their maternal grandmother. They also have a younger brother, according to Laura Vopel's Facebook page. That's his fucking wife. Aldridge was born in May 20th, 2020, in, 20, in 2000, to Laura Vopel and Aaron Brink. Uh, Brink filed for divorce the next year when... When Aldrich was uh, a year old, and uh, Laura Vapel, being the stable one, was granted visitation rights. It's this article here where we find out that he was visiting Laura. <laughs> Laura. Um, turns out at the home of Leslie Bess, at, at the incident occurred at the home of Leslie Bowman, who at the time was renting a room to Aldridge's mother, Laura, Laura Vopel. <coughs> so that's where you, where you come to that uh, understanding. Um, that's where that's, that whole thing happened. I, 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 I don't fucking know. Uh, there's, Top knot guy. And of course I showed you the video of him fucking giving his assessment. Uh, this this is a shit show. This whole fucking thing is a shit show. So he's he's demonizing Republicans, he's demonizing for some reason Mormons by associating them with him. And at the same time demonizing Randy Vopel trying to fucking submarine his political fucking future by saying he's the best guy in the world, he's the best candidate in the world, uh, says the father, the methed out father, porn star father uh, of the guy who killed five people at Club Q. Uh, that submarines his fucking campaigns right there. And why is he doing that? Clearly he's doing that because he's the father of his ex-fucking wife. whom he still probably, I guess, holds a grudge with. <coughs> I, I don't know. It's just a fucked up situation. Here, let me give the cat back. Oh, the cat's gone. Uh, it's a fucked up situation. And I, I, I can't even begin to wrap my head around it. <coughs> Either one of those three options, and it's got to be one of those three options. Either one of those three options is bad in its own right. If this guy was so fucking screwed in the head, uh, for some reason he decides to go kill a bunch of gay people at Club Q for no apparent reason, uh, and the press and the politicians harp on it immediately while people are still hooked up to IVs, 
uh, for their own political agenda. That's fucking crass. That's craven. That's 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 as bad as grooming in a lot of ways. Um, if it's the fact that you know the whole thing was uh, was set up. Uh, and this kid was picked out, hand-selected, because of his fucked-up upbringing, because of his uh, recent situation with the police, um, and was switched out with the guy, whoever whoever did actually carry it out. And top knot is just making up some fucking story because he's former military. Then, you know, that's bad as well, obviously. And then, of course, the other one being uh, the whole thing is a pageant um, with some bad actors in it. You, you never know how people are going to behave when you know, a camera is shoved into their face or a whole bunch of cameras are shoved into their faces because of situations like this. Um, all of a sudden, this dude's you know, living his little life in his little shithole fucking apartment, the father, and you know his fa- his his son is on television for killing a bunch of fucking people, and see see he's sitting there smoking his fucking meth, knowing damn well the fucking hounds of the press are on their way to sniff him out and be sitting downstairs when he goes down uh, to his fucking truck. So, is it possible that you know this guy just decided to meth himself to the to the point where he thought he could fucking uh, cope? Uh, with that interview, sure, of course it is. But I, the fact that he's tossing in all of these fucking tropes in order to demonize certain folks, and he just gets one little zinger in there on the, on the father of his fucking uh, ex-wife. That sounds like rational thought to me. And not somebody who's just the meth ravings. He's too fucking rational. He's too contrived for that to be real, in my opinion. So the question is why? We've seen shit like this happen before. We've seen father of a victim and fucking Sandy Hook laughing and joking, standing off to the side, waiting for his chance to go to the podium and talk uh, to the press and making jokes and laughing all the way as he walked the six feet to the fucking podium, and then stopping for a second, putting his notes down, and collecting himself like the actors used to back in school, and then delivering his somber message. We've seen odd shit. In the same instance, incident, we saw a fucking uh, coroner, county coroner, medical examiner, my fault, during a fucking press conference where he had only at that point autopsied six of the 20 children he had uh, to do. Uh, He's up there making jokes and laughing and uh, guffawing as he's describing uh, what had happened and the process he was in. Now, again, this is a person who is... uh, unlike myself, in a situation where he had to deal with (laughs) the horror of autopsying autopsying, uh, 20 children. However, he's also a man who had been, because he was the chief medical examiner, uh, a man who had been doing such things for quite a long time. You say, well, Scott, you know, people handle things differently. People handle things in unexpected ways, and that's very, very true. However, um, that there is a, in his case, and in the case of the father, who was so unaccustomed to being in front of the cameras, he didn't realize that the cameras were always filming even before he went up to the stage and gave himself the fucking moment and started to deliver. So he wasn't accustomed to that. He wasn't expecting it. There is a certain, in the case of the medical examiner, there is a certain expectation (coughs) 
that, that um, is required of you in that position. And making flippant jokes while talking about uh, autopsying the first six children um, is not um, within the parameters of how you are expected to behave. Some people called it uh, duper delight, and that is um, what you see a lot of, by the way. Um, over and over again, people uh, making inappropriate jokes or laughing um, when they're talking about various events and they're very fresh in their, um, when what happened <coughs> in their grief process. <coughs> Stop it. What I know is this. When, this is human nature. When people do something um, and they get away with it, they tend to continue with the same behavior until they stopped, until they are exposed. Um, the shooting of Kennedy, and then of course the shooting of uh, RFK, and then of course the shooting of Martin Luther King, and then of course the shooting of <coughs> God damn it, Malcolm X, and then of course <coughs> the shooting of fucking Reagan. When they're not held to account to start with, they tend to believe that they can get away with pretty much anything, <coughs> or at least certainly start. Sorry, at least certainly continue to get away with the same behavior. Uh, this is true for. Uh, Whoever's running uh, various events, and uh, there are, there was, a, there is a, an American cam a Gladio campaign taking place in this country. Whether these latest two events uh, are part of that, it's for you to decide. Um, but they will continue to do these things until they are held to account. <laughs> The case of the uh, shooting in the Walmart in um, uh, Chesapeake, uh, again, uh, do not know exactly what the hell was going on with that. Turns out it was, they are claiming it was that individual, uh, the night manager, I forget his name. Um, and it turns out that he only was armed with a handgun and uh, several uh, Magazines, whatever they, whatever they put in the, with the with the bullets in them, clips, magazines, whatever you want to call it. Um, that lends itself to, in my opinion, that lends itself to the certainly more authentic sounding or looking than these other events, <coughs> because there wasn't a long gun involved, and they always try to they always stick a long gun in there because a long gun's what they fucking want to do away with. Um, and, of course, the fact that he worked there and he targeted to start with upper-level management or management uh, people seems to, me to believe, uh, seems to me that it was a uh, disgruntled, actually a disgruntled fucking worker. But we know, we'll never really know, to be honest with you. Again, um, videos certainly exist in the case of Walmart and videos certainly exist in the case of Club Q. Um, there is, there's going to be, for their own insurance purposes, there's going to be uh, security cameras inside Club Q. So this video, supposedly, if he actually did tackle him, if Hero Top Knot actually did fucking tackle him and uh, was pounding him and telling him, Guy, I'm going to fucking kill you, uh, while dictating to other people what they do. Okay, you do this, and you open the door, and you get me a sandwich. <sighs> Um, then that video exists. And there's absolutely no reason not to show it. Unless. 
It works. Told you it was going to be a stream of consciousness video. Um, just kind of rambling. Uh, I watched uh, the most recent Oliver Stone uh, documentary on JFK. <coughs> and uh, last night. And uh, it was interesting. Some stuff came out. But it was more just, you know... Because it highlighted, it was a film that highlighted the stuff that came out as a result of the uh, declassification of certain things. It, 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 just, it just showed us stuff that we already knew. Um, I, one thing I wasn't aware of was the fact that they had a plan in Chicago. I knew they had a plan in uh, Tampa down here where I live now. Um, and it just went into more detail on those. But it was... All right, it was worthwhile. But the thing that stuck with me was um, the pattern, you know. They put people who did it in charge of the investigation, uh, much like what happened on September 11th. You know, they put people who did it in charge of the investigation. Uh, NIST has reported that, uh, and actually listed as contributing to their uh, conclusion about why the buildings came down, uh, assistance from somebody involved with the uh, controlled demolition company that was actually on fucking site when the buildings came down. They do that over and over and over again. Um, I, I don't know what the fucking... I'm, I'm guessing 70% of the people in this country know Lee Harvey Oswald was the patsy. I'm guessing. It's probably, probably higher. And I'm also guessing that less than 15% will actually admit it in public with their spouse, with their loved ones, with their trusted fucking companions. I'm sure they, you know, having a few beers here or there, just sitting around over a cup of coffee and some tea talking about it. They'll do that. But in public, of course not. But we're such a fucking democracy. Fucking Castro said, you know, it, who was it that said things are really going to change? Was it fucking Malcolm X? One of them. Somebody said this country is going to change <coughs> a lot. And I think it might have been Martin Luther King. Castro was quoted as saying, oh shit. <laughs> um, um, you know, we get, you go from the big ones like that, and you go to 9 11, you go to Gulf of Tonkin, you get, the, you get the really big ones out there, Waco and Oklahoma City and. You get all these fucking big ones out there, and now it's like they've just, they get away with the big shit, so now they, they got these smaller little agencies, even fucking police departments, thinking they can just pull their own fucking little fucking events, and, and they'll be covered for it. I mean, it's just, as long as they're going for the same fucking thing, which is the same shit they're pushing for. In terms of limiting your fucking rights, limiting your rights to free speech, limiting your rights to fucking access to firearms. I'll say this and I'll end with this. Um, when I was being sued by uh, an individual for having uh, questions about what happened at um, Charlottesville, and they brought in this massive fucking multi billion dollar fucking law firm, uh, O'Malveny to work for free for the plaintiff for some reason uh, to see myself and Alex Jones and Derek Wilbon and Alan West and Alan West, Alan West and uh, Lee Stranahan and I think two others. I forget their names. Um, when I was being sued, it was clear to us at the time that that was going to be, slap lawsuits were going to be the uh, 
preferred course of action to go after people who were putting out the wrong messages. Um, and though that one never went to trial, it lasted for four fucking years, and like slap lawsuits are supposed to do, uh, they cause people to have to pay money, to be concerned about what's going to happen with their future, to, to mortgage you know, their, their, their future um, and their current wealth for um, protection so that they are not penalized. Um, that's what a slap lawsuit is all about. <laughs> and the judge uh, rejected our claim that it was a slap lawsuit, even though it clearly was. And then in the end, uh, plaintiffs settled um, after having charged, you know, gotten taken the thing as, as far as he could. I believe because he didn't want to have to go to court and uh, defend uh, or, or present the case. Because we had a good, we had a good case. <coughs> then, of course, Alex Jones is sued some more, and uh, some more lawsuits are filed while we were going through that whole process. Um, and then he is summarily fucking. There's a summa summary judgment in a couple of the cases. He, they they say he owes a billion dollars, and we see that this process is continuing. Now they are coming right out and saying. Anybody talking about this situation, anybody talking about grooming, anybody talking about it being wrong to fucking uh, take a child who has no idea what they fucking are and to start with, uh, kid wants to be Spider-Man, but he also wants to be Spider-Woman, so of course they're going to take him to a fucking hospital someplace that's going to get paid sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 from the insurance company to provide, to produce bottom and top surgery on the individual you know, at the age of 11 years old, uh, anybody who says this stuff is wrong, anybody who says taking fucking nine-year-olds, 10-year-olds to fucking uh, drag shows uh, is wrong. Uh, people like that. Anybody who's got the wrong opinion who says, you know, this is, we shouldn't be sexualizing children at this point in time, especially when they're, you know, at that age, they're figuring out who they are. <laughs> There's plenty of them out there who have already gone through the process, who are now saying, I wish that my parents hadn't allowed this to happen because somebody, it was, it was the thing to do when I was in school. <laughs> There's plenty of that. And again, I hate to mention, uh, once again, the conspiracy theorists were right when it came to uh, the problems that were uh, that are still prevalent uh, with the faux vaxes, <laughs> and everyone said, "Oh God, how dare you! You're going to kill people by talking about that." And turns out, mm, right? Well, it's going to be the same thing with this. And yet, uh, before that happens, they want to sue people into compliance. So, I hate to say this, uh, people like fucking. Tim Tool, or Tim Pool as he's known, Beanie Boy, uh, male pattern baldness king, uh, sellout, fucking liar and fraud, Tim Pool, uh, is being fucking abused and will probably be threatened with a lawsuit by somebody uh, from maybe Club Q or somebody else. Uh, for having an opinion. And this is the kind of thing that we can't allow. We can't allow the kinds of fucking slap lawsuits that I endured <laughs> and others have endured. We can't allow this to become fucking commonplace, a common tool. This is exactly what Cass Sunstein laid out. We have to find a way to either use government to penalize the conspiracy theorists are the people who talk about these things that are counter to the, our narrative. And one way we can do that is to tax them. And tax them, he suggested, we can either use the government to tax them with some kind of penalty or fine. And if that's not constitutional, then they could do it through civilian lawsuits. They can turn the civilians into, and, and, and basically tell civilians, hey, file lawsuits. 
that's that's going to help fucking that'll help your case and you'll get a bunch of money at the same time and it'll save the fucking community because it'll keep people from fucking opening their mouths that was that was Cass Sunstein talking about that shit he was fucking Barack Obama's regulation czar and that was fucking 2008 2009 I think he wrote that 2008 or 2007. That's what we're watching. That's literally what we're watching now. So the one billion dollar fucking settlement or or or, or uh, uh, finding against Alex Jones is going to set that precedent. It's going to set that precedent. Because our loss, the lawsuit against us, didn't because it wasn't. It never went to fucking trial, and there wasn't a ruling in that case. <coughs> so it didn't serve that purpose. However, what happened to, to Jones did. And so now you have commenters uh, openly suggesting as they talk about this stuff uh, to their audience who might be members of certain communities, you know, oh, and oh, yeah, you know, lawsuits could be filed, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more, say no more, and sure enough, lawsuits will be filed, and I certainly would do whatever I could to support the individuals, whether I like them or don't like them, Um, in the case of Tim Pool, don't like them, Uh, but I certainly would be supportive of uh, their efforts in in that regard. (laughs) <laughs> they have a right to have their opinion, even if it isn't um, politically advantageous for the left or the right. It doesn't matter. We forget about this shit. You know, you talk about, and la- this will be the last thing. I just want to make sure everyone understands this. These fucking people are not one party or the other. The idea of using a fucking event, an event, by the way, which they did themselves, but the idea of using an event to push your political agenda uh, isn't exclusive to the fake fucking centrist fucking left. I'll give you a prime example. It's a bunch of firemen working, and in comes the fucking Secret Service, in comes the fucking news, in comes all these people from the fucking White House, and they lock down Ground Zero. It is literally smoldering. It is literally fucking smoldering from all the goddamn metal that was vaporized by PETN. It is literally still smoldering, and there are people still being pulled out of it, and their bodies being pulled out of it. And they climbed his ass up, George W. Bush to stand on the fucking rebel, rubble, literally standing on body parts to make his address. The people who did this, they'll hear hear all of us soon enough, meaning he's going to launch a fucking war against Iraq. And members of his own cabinet are the ones who did it. Literally standing on the bodies of the victims in order to promote their own agenda, political foreign policy agenda. Now, I don't care what you believe in terms of who did it. That's what he did. Now, whether it was 19 box cutters and a dude in a fucking cave. Or whether it was a very complicated fucking plot by people from the project of the new American century who promised uh, a new Pearl Harbor exactly 365 days before it happened. However you want to believe, the reality is they used it to further their own fucking agenda. So let's not pretend it's only the fucking left, a fake left, a centrist left, or corporatist left that do this shit. 
It's all of them. I have no respect for any of them anymore, to be honest. None of them. There's not a single fucking politician that I have respect for. A little bit for DeSantis only because of his stand on not allowing to do this crap anymore. No mandates and no lockdowns and take those fucking masks off the kids. When he said take the fucking masks off those fucking kids standing behind him, was it? It's not. That's enough for me. You can go on and fucking try to fucking regime change Cuba and regime change Venezuela and regime change fucking Nicaragua for your fucking wealthy expats from Cuba and Venezuela and Nicaragua all you want, don't care. You can still be a fucking brutal fucking neoliberal, don't care. You took the masks off the fucking children in school. It's good enough for me. That's 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 the best we can hope for from all these pieces of shit. Again, I warned you. I told you it was going to be a fucking stream of consciousness. <laughs> Anyway, you survived it, I survived it. I'm going to go lock up the banana again. Yeah, that's cool shit. Again, thank you. The cats enjoyed it. I think Kitten's out turning tricks trying to get some more banana. Anyway, I thank you guys very much for your time. Uh, Bo says thank you. It is Thanksgiving. Um, you guys have a good Thanksgiving. Enjoy your family if you can. If you got one of those families you can enjoy, Bo was just fucking stumbling over himself. What? You want to get in the video for, for the Thanksgiving video? Is that it? You're going to be able to? Say happy Thanksgiving. Say thank you. Bo, say thank you. Give me a kiss. Good boy. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> Uh, you see my you see my dirty fucking trash can. All right, guys. Thank you very much, and have a good Thanksgiving. And I'll talk to you later. Ow! What are you doing? Don't. Ow! What are you doing? Ow! No! Ow! What? Ow! That's my nuts. Ow! You hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go outside. <gasps>